I'm Mary Ann Beatty with Senior Services of Alexandria, and I'm so excited to be here with Margaret Bruce um, for a new segment that we're calling Margaret at Home. It's our new cooking segment, and uh, we're going to get started. But before we start cooking, um, I want to just welcome Margaret. Thank you for being on our show, and um, just give us a little bit of a little bit about yourself and what brought you back to Alexandria, and we're so happy to have you part as part of our community. Oh, it's delightful to be here, Mary Ann. And the main reason I'm here is that I've got two grandkids right down the street, and a son that we haven't spent a lot of time with around in the same neighborhood because my husband's been with the United States Navy and then on loan to uh, the Methodist Church in London for a couple of decades, so we're glad to be back in the United States. Thank you, and we're glad to have you back as part of our community. So, we are going to cook something really fun and delicious and simple that you can do at home, so let's get started. Sure. Uh, what I've done is I put together a meal that when you're done with your day's activities, whether or not it's running around after those grandkids, or it's doing any one of a myriad of activities coming home from work, you can put together more easily and quicker than probably even going out and grabbing a bite at a restaurant. Also, the eating is by far the best. We're using some fresh ingredients, and I've put a few out there for you just to take a look at. These are primarily the things that we're going to be using today. I'm going to start with the tomatoes. Tomatoes have been prolific, delicious, and the best ever this year. A lot of you are growing them at home, and some of you uh, just go down to the store, and that's fair enough to pick up your tomatoes because they're good no matter which way you're doing them. There are certain flavors that come in really good with tomatoes, and that's garlic, shallot, basil. No matter what you do to it, it's going to be delicious. But instead of eating the tomato fresh, we're going to take a look at doing something a little bit different, and that is roasting the tomato. Now, roasting is actually the same as baking, but baking kind of sounds dowdy when you put it with, <laughs> with the tomato. Roasting so we're always gonna... <laughs> intimidates me a little bit. I'm never quite sure about roasting. <laughs> Oh, well, hey, it's all the same. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> knows, <you> know. <laughs> Everybody knows how to bake. Mm -hmm. So, but we won't call this baking because mm -hmm. we're going to roast our tomatoes. Now, all I'm doing is taking some fresh bread. And uh, you can use even the crust with this. Mm -hmm. I made the crumbs by running it through a food processor. You could do it through a blender. You could even just do it by hand. So all I have is about half a cup of, of fresh breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. And I know I don't usually advocate white bread, but this does work better. Mm -hmm. But you can get white bread that is actually whole grain. So if you're concerned about that for eating, then you can go ahead and do it. This is fresh minced garlic mm -hmm. and fresh minced shallot. Shallot is in the onion family. It's a lot milder. And because I just want this to be kind of a mild complement with the chicken dish we're going to put together, I find that this works out really well. The olive oil that I'm going to use, Miriam, can you pass me that bottle? Mm -hmm. There's lots of grades of olive oil, but for this, you don't have to pay the big bucks because the big bucks is going to be the greener the olive oil, the closer to the first, mm -hmm. first press. And that is a stronger flavor, but you really don't need that all the time. So this is just about a tablespoon of this light olive oil, which is going to look more like canola, it's going to look more like vegetable mm -hmm. oil mm -hmm. than the greens. And we're just going to mix that in, and fingers work really well for this. <laughs> it's interesting what you said about olive oil, because when I go to buy olive oil, I'm always, you know, kind of uncertain as to what to buy, do I buy, you know, the extra light, extra virgin, you know, never never quite oh, sure. Yeah, and um, I'm just grabbing some pepper, fresh grazed pepper here. I think also it keeps going up in price. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to advocate that you want to buy the best quality when you're talking about oils, 
and you're talking about vinegars, go for the top quality that you can mm -hmm. because when you're doing fresh and not using a lot of ingredients, it really screams through mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you want it to scream through the right message. As far as salt, you can use coarse, you can use sea salt. Um, using those salts that don't have a lot of processing in them is helpful. Again, if you want to keep your ingredients pristine, then go ahead and use something that doesn't have a lot of additives to it. Yeah, so that's easy. Just put it on top. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Now, if you want to get really jazzed with this, mm -hmm. and this is where your personal preference comes in, because everybody's taste is slightly different. If you wanted to add some Asiago, Parmigiana, Romano, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. any of those hard cheeses, and just grate it up and put it on this, and fill these cavities, go for it. Because we're only going to roast these tomatoes for about 15 minutes until they get soft. Mm -hmm. And when they get soft, the flavor develops with it. It takes on the surrounding flavors with the oil that we've put on. Now we're going to just pop this into the oven for 15 minutes. I have it on 400. And while that bakes, let's take a look at a quick and easy chicken dish. Now, I have some fillets of breast meat that mm -hmm. have been skinned and deboned. And what we're going to be doing is just getting this temperature up to a really high heat. So although these cook for just about one or two minutes aside, um, the heat has to be very, very hot and it's something that you're going to need to keep an eye on. We want the butter because, and this is unsalted butter, butter gives the flavor. Um, so we're going to add a little bit of olive oil and pass me that moment mm -hmm. light. It's mm -hmm. going to be the light olive oil again. So we just add this to it, not very much, just about a teaspoon or that tablespoon of that in order to keep it from smoking. Now, I want you to see this, and the camera is coming in a bit. You see how it starts to foam, and that foam is not salt, although if you use in salted butter, it would be part of that foam. We let that subside a bit. The other thing we have done here is to take our chicken fillets and make sure that they're about the same thickness, which is about a quarter of an inch to half an inch. And we put it in to sear it on one side. They must be dry. Wet meat will not brown. Oh. So hmm. these are dry. I make sure that they're dry. Mm -hmm. And this technique works not only for poultry, wow. fish is uh -huh. good, uh -huh. if you take pork, mm -hmm. if you take beef, uh, duck, mm -hmm. any of the poultry's meat, sauteing is one of the quickest ways to do it and maintain a flavor base. Mm -hmm. So whenever your taste dictates, whatever you feel like, just use a little uh -huh. bit of sauteing, uh -huh. it goes in minutes. And if you just follow a couple of these principles, huh. you have dozens of choices out there. Oh, wow. Huh. Now, when you're cooking pancakes, mm -hmm. one of the ways you know a pancake is just about done and look for the edge. The little bubble, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you look for the bubbles at the top, yeah. but then yeah. you start to track that edge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's track that edge and see what's happening with it because in actuality, that edge is starting to turn from the light beige pinkish color mm -hmm. to now a bit of a transparent, maybe creamy white. Mm. So we know it's mm -hmm. getting done. Oh, yeah, I see that right around Yeah, you can see yeah. it there. Yeah. So when you saute, there is just a couple things you need to remember. You want to use a good pan, and we already talked about that. But you also, with your dry meat, you want to make sure you're not crowding it. So we have lots of space in that uh -huh. here. Mm -hmm. And if we had a couple friends that wanted to come for dinner, right. they go, oh, I don't know what to try. Then we just take these out uh -huh. and two more in. Right. So right. we had enough space uh -huh. around it. Exactly. Now, we're ready to turn this because it looks like it's getting enough of an edge. It's mm -hmm. about an eighth of an inch, mm -hmm. maybe up to a quarter of an inch. So we're just going to flip these over. Smells delicious. 
Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Already it smells mm -hmm. good. And notice what we've added to it? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. But speaking of which, this is the time now that we're going to sprinkle a little salt and pepper on it. So just get a little fresh up on both of these. And we're going to put a pretty decent amount of salt. If you're on a salt-free diet, this is the time when you can use the kind of seasoning that matches what your diet should uh, consist of. And you've got flavors going that you have learned to enjoy. But the real flavor base is going to come with a, a glazing sauce that we do. Mm -hmm. And I know that may sound a little intimidating because it is very fresh, mm -hmm. but oh my gosh, this is easy. Okay. So incredibly mm -hmm. easy. Now, some uh, sources will say just about a minute each on this side, and you essentially don't want to overcook it because you want the juices to go mm -hmm. mm -hmm. If you have no juice, <laughs> then you have cooked it oh, to a leather uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> Now, actually, we can kind of see here, Marianne, can you not? Okay. That yes. you're kind of looking in there because the brass comes in too low. And we can mm -hmm. kind of see that maybe it's running a little bit clear. Uh -huh. But if it's slightly pink, we uh -huh. don't want to undercook it. So uh -huh. We're going to let this go for just another probably 30 seconds. And now we're going to talk about the deglazing. Okay. Um, the glazing that I'm going to be using starts with a shallot. And one of the reasons why I'm doing shallot and garlic in the, in the three dishes that you're going to see is cut your prep down to a very quick time. And if you're doing shallot in one, you might as well do it for the others. And the shallot is going to be a lot milder flavor than is even a sweet the gala uh -huh. or a purple onion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yellow onion, right. Spanish onion. The reason why I'm doing that is it complements the, the chicken. Mm -hmm. Well, coming with a stronger flavor piece when we do a quick and easy dressing for the salad, because that will be a compliment. But this just makes your life easy. Do three cloves of garlic, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about that later. Um, on how you can prepare your minced garlic, and we'll mm -hmm. talk about how to easily prepare your minced mm -hmm. shallot. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to take more than a minute. So we've got that right here, and it's all set to go. Okay, now I think we're just about there. I'm going to just flip it over one more time okay. to make sure that we're getting it to the clear juice base as clean as we can. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is take and move this to our platter. And I have a piece of foil down there. Marianne, okay. you grab that. Yes, like that. We're going to tint this. Okay. Um, usually you hear of tinting only with large pieces of meat. But because we're doing a deglaze, we're just going to put that mm -hmm. over. Let it rest. And that just rests and let, let the juices yeah. kind of... Regroup. Right. Okay. You want the juices, instead of if you're cutting into it, to ooze all over the mm -hmm. place, you want them to go back into the meat okay. because that okay. has the flavor okay. and the texture. Mm -hmm. You don't want that sinewy, dry, right. chewy, mm -hmm. leathery yeah. mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh -huh. You actually start eating with your eyes and your nose. Uh -huh. And then it moves into the texture that first hits your palate. Mm -hmm. Then it is the flavors that mm -hmm. unfold that mm -hmm. you want to be exciting. So we're creating layers mm -hmm. of flavor. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, who fun. knew? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now what we're going to do is take the mint shallot and the mint garlic and just put it in here. We still have it on 400, a really high heat. We're just going to move this around. Now the glazing needs to involve some sort of liquid. And I have here uh, some chicken broth, and I actually make my own, which we can talk about that on how easy it is. But I'm just going to take a third of a cup of this and twice as much wine. You can use the if you want. Okay. But a really crisp 
dry white uh -huh. is brilliant with this. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing two thirds of a cup of this with that one third of the chicken broth. And this will become our deglazing liquid. Mm -hmm. We now have this, and you can see how these have been. This is called sweating. Uh -huh. And all we've done is sweat again. Now they're turning a little bit caramelized. Uh -huh. And you notice all these caramelized traces that we have in yeah, our pan? Yeah. That's where the flavor okay. is. So we want to oh, capture that. Okay. And that's what smells so mm -hmm. good. It does smell good. Yeah. So we're going to put this in. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to take this. And we keep it at this high heat again, mm -hmm. but we're going to trace off all of those bits and bobs mm -hmm. that have been left in the pan. So now you see what's happening here. We almost don't have anything left in the pan, and mm -hmm. that's what we want. Right. Right. But we also want this to kind of boil uh -huh. down uh -huh. and get really syrup. Mm -hmm. So we're going to let that regroup for mm -hmm. just about a minute or so. Okay. And it's very hot. Okay. High temperature. And should you stir it every so often? Yeah. And it? so if it looks like it needs to be stirred, mm -hmm. okay. go for it. I will. Absolutely. <laughs> because we're now going to talk about salad. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now the salad is again going to be very, very simple. And I know the experts tell you don't use a knife when you are working with lettuce. And fair enough, it may tend to turn it brown when you are cutting it, wherever the knife has rested. Oh, oh. But <clears throat> for this particular lettuce, what we're going to do is use heart of romaine. Mm. Very, very simple, mm -hmm. so we're just going to cut the edge off. Uh -huh. Now these brown bits that you see on the lettuce really aren't harmful for health, mm -hmm. but you start eating with your eyes uh -huh. and your nose. And if something looks like, ew, it's yeah. all brown, uh -huh. you think, no, I don't want to eat that. Mm -hmm. So we are going to remove that little bit and see if we've got a pristine look underneath this. And you do. Yeah, we do. See, that's looking really good now. Mm -hmm. Now, in actuality, believe it or not, there is a recipe for sautéing lettuce leaves that's really good. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Not for this version, but I'm not going to throw so those away. Throw those away. That's right. <laughs> it's really good eating. Now, I just take this and cut this in half, and then cut side up, because we want to make this really, really easy eating, I'm going to take this and put it on our platter. This will be a visually a lovely side oh, piece to go wonderful. with our dish. Oh, lovely. Yeah, because it, it just looks good. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's going to look really, really good. Oh. We talked about different grades of olive oil. Now, this is where the olive oil does make mm -hmm. a difference. Mm -hmm. And so I have here a really good grade, and you can probably see it. It's green. Green, yes. The yes. first press is green, and uh -huh. they go through sometimes three, four presses. Wow. So huh. you want to get a name brand that you're familiar with, mm -hmm. something that makes sense because you like the quality mm -hmm. and the flavor. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that you do have to pay. Yeah. yeah. But you usually pay for what you get when yeah. it comes to yeah. uh, olive oil. But so you can find a nice grade in the local grocery store. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, now I have two vinegars here, and of course, the one, my favorite vinegar is Modena. Mm -hmm. I like uh, the vinegars that are a little bit sweeter. And but for this, I think it works really well just to do a red wine vinegar, and you don't have to do the balsamic. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Now it's easy, and I'm taking I have a half tablespoon of lemon juice. So the fresh flavor points in this is going to be not only the lemon, the garlic, and a little bit of shallot. Mm. Okay, we're going to do a half tablespoon of vinegar as well. So the rule of thumb is one part of oil mm -hmm. to, or five parts of oil mm -hmm. to one part of acid. And okay. you can use lemon juice, you oh. can use orange juice, mm -hmm. you can use vinegar, any of the array of vinegars, and all of them will affect mm -hmm. the taste. 
Okay. This doesn't have to take us long. I'm talking. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's taking a lot longer than it usually takes. Trust me. Mixing together a fresh dressing is so straightforward. I almost think you shouldn't ever bother to buy it off the shelf. You never know how long those dressings have been sitting there. Can okay. you make enough to save if you wanted to? Sure. Yeah. You can save it for maybe up to a week, okay. but then you yeah. run into the same hiccup mm -hmm. as all dressings. Mm -hmm. The bottled dressings have preservatives in them, and mm -hmm. fat is the messenger of flavor. Mm -hmm. So those bottled dressings that are laden with fat are carrying that preservative mm -hmm. message throughout, uh -huh. and it makes a big difference yeah. to the flavor. Right. What you've got here is fresh going, mm -hmm. so it, it's going to taste a world mm -hmm. apart. Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is take, um, oh, there's actually four ingredients that are half tablespoon each. It's the vinegar, mm -hmm. lemon juice, mustard. mustard. I use a Dijon. Dijon mustard is made with a little bit of wine, mm -hmm. white wine, and uh, pretty, and sometimes you can get it coarse, mm -hmm. grind, mm -hmm. and that's really conducive. Mm -hmm. But this doesn't. This has just uh, smooth. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. The other thing that we're going to use is a fourth teaspoon of salt in this. We're going to take fresh brown pepper. We're going to take the shallot, again a half tablespoon, so it's real easy, half tablespoon shallot, half tablespoon mustard, half tablespoon vinegar, half tablespoon lemon juice, what could be easier? And we will put the recipe on our website, so yeah, not so to worry, you don't have to memorize. Yeah, and then here we go with our third cup of really decent Good olive oil. And you can smell it, you know. Let your senses be your guide with all of this. That's the fun part of cooking. <laughs> I like to cook. Like, we can tell you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> then the next thing, and the reason why I'm going with the blue cheese this time, mm -hmm. it adds a counterpoint to this. Mm -hmm. We can turn that off okay. now. We're going to lose right. our... Uh, Deglazing. Okay. Yeah, I'll just turn that off. Now, because really, when you have this, and I know it's looking not incredibly enticing, but that's delicious, and that's your, your base for mm -hmm. a variety of things. You could add to it basil. Mm -hmm. You could add to it thyme, which mm -hmm. I have here. You could add to it chives. Mm -hmm. You could add to it rosemary. Mm -hmm. You can do instead of the fresh herbs, you can do the dried herbs at uh -huh. this point. Mm -hmm. So anything that piques your fancy mm -hmm. goes into this dressing and goes, you can put it on a salad, you can put it on a vegetable. Oh wow. You do Swiss chard with a really fresh dressing on it and mm -hmm. suddenly that stinky strong flavored uh -huh. vegetable uh -huh. is quite delicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good for you and delicious. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things you mm -hmm. can do. Okay, we've got this in now, uh -huh. and all we're going to do, I mean, there's a couple things, ways you could do it. You could take this and just whisk it, uh -huh. but I think it's easier just to put it in an old oh, yes. jar. Yeah, and just shake. Yeah, I'm going to shake. Okay. 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 okay, now what you have here is the tomatoes, and mm. these are done. Mm. So we're going to take these tomatoes and put them on our platter. Mm. This is so elegant. Yeah. Oh, and yet so easy. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Oh. And now we've got this delicious pan. I'm just going to use the same thing. We don't mm -hmm. have to worry about cross contamination because it's going to the same place. Mm. We're going to now take the, the glazing and just pour it over our meat. Mm. Oh, isn't that like yummy? Yeah. Oh. Mm. 
Get all those little bits and bobs mm -hmm. challenge mm -hmm. going there. It smells heavenly in that wood. Yeah. I think color is really one of the keys to cooking, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. The other thing I'm learning with a lot of studying nutrition, because I spent a lot of time with my science background, mm -hmm. looking at what the body does, assimilating mm -hmm. foods. Mm -hmm. Color is related to the powerhouse sources of nutrition. Oh. It's wow. very related. Mm -hmm. And the more you eat a variety of foods, mm -hmm. The healthier it is, oh, wow. and the easier your body can assimilate oh, all those nutrients. Yeah, so it does make a difference. Yeah. Now we want to make our dish look really good. <laughs> so what you're going to do is uh, we're going to switch sides here, mm -hmm. and you're going to pour the dressing over the yeah the mm -hmm. salad, yeah. and I'm going to garnish. Our main. Mm. Right. But I'm going to grab scissors out of here. Okay. okay. So you can just, just go across it, it and see. Okay. okay, there you go. Okay. Now, basil and tomatoes has been a classic pairing for actually centuries. Mm. And it is so easy to do. So all I'm going to do is just take and snip some of this fresh basil on top here because. It's just going to be mm. so incredibly mm. good. Um, fresh basil is around, especially in your gardens in the summer, but when that first snap of fall hits, you pretty much have to go to your market mm -hmm. to get it. Unless you've got some sort of a hot house mm -hmm. going in your back garden. So Which we don't yet. I mean, we're working on ours, but mm -hmm. we just moved here, so we don't have it yet. Mm -hmm. So, in, oh, terms, term. in terms of getting, when the weather turns cold, in terms of getting your fresh herbs, what would you recommend still getting fresh if you can in the grocery store? I just think the flavor is it, makes yeah. mm -hmm. the biggest difference. Mm -hmm. But it's all up for grabs, mm -hmm. too, on how nutritious uh -huh. it is. But we do know the closer you eat to the source of it being mm -hmm. known, mm -hmm. the healthier you mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I say the longer the shelf life, the uh -huh. shorter your life. Right. And you so <laughs> many of it has. Uh -huh. It just uh -huh. can't yeah, be. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> but let flavor oh, be your oh, guide. Yeah. Oh, this is yeah. just fabulous. So I think we need a sample. I think we do. So oh, let's, let's get just, some lights. Let's try and, it. And uh, try it. I think we do. We want to thank you for letting us come into your lovely home and cook with you today. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. I feel very strongly about nutritious eating, and one of the things that I really enjoy is introducing my grandkids and all of their friends in the neighborhood who some good uh -huh. eating. Oh, that's wonderful. Plus, just yeah. having some, yeah. some uh, good at the yeah. end of the day, yeah. they all go home. And exactly. you just need to that's remember. right. That's right. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Oh, thank you so much. Well, here we are, and um, we want to thank Margaret um, with uh, joining us for Margaret at Home. And the recipes will be on the website. And we'll see you next time. And we're going to sample. Bon appetit.